Look guys, if you're gonna work hard, you gotta play hard too. Well, the roll protection saved you and the bucket did. Yeah. He's like, oh, what I, what I come here for? All right guys, so far we have just a pile of logs. And in order to make good use of the maple syrup season this year, we're gonna have to get started making our evaporator because this might take a little bit longer than uh, the maple syrup season is actually going to take. So we've got to have the evaporator ready so when the sap starts flowing, we can start boiling it off. Well guys, some of the uh, best laid plans are foiled by snow. So uh, it might be an indoor project sort of day today. The weatherman was correct and they dumped with about a foot of snow on us overnight. So the other day I was uh, kind of anticipating, I wasn't anticipating the snow, I was anticipating actually coming back and pulling more logs out. So I uh, went out of my way to actually bring the tractor in and uh, I plowed a sh basically a trail through the bush, indoor project time. So let's work on the evaporator. We gotta get that thing done. Spring, spring is just around the corner, I'm told. We gotta get that thing started because if we don't get it started and the spring warm weather comes and then we'll be kind of caught without uh, having our evaporator built. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. In order to create our evaporator, we're gonna have to start with a firebox. And what I'm going to use is an old oil tank. You can find these oil tanks by a lot of the time, or, or other ways you can find is those scrap yards. Scrap yards don't like to take them because they sometimes contain used oil and then they have to deal with that. I'm gonna, if you guys stay tuned, I'll show you how to deal with that problem. I found this particular oil drum from a farmer down the road. He had, uh, I believe, stored used motor oil in it, but then he found a little tiny hole in it, so he just continued using it. So he basically said, All right, you know, you don't can have it. Jumped at the opportunity because, you know, you always kind of need one before you have one. Ideally, you have some on hand or stock some old oil tanks. Well, I didn't think I was getting weaker. Turns out this uh, tank, it's got some sludge in the bottom of it, which is uh, not uh, not the easiest way to start off the day, trying to make an evaporator. I think I gotta get that out of there before I even tilt it up. Should be a plug in there so it doesn't actually run out. I'm gonna take the top thing off and stick it in the back, just so I can actually get a hole in the thing so I can actually see how much is in there. It doesn't look like there's a lot. I haven't done a cool tool time in a while, so I figured I'd do one right now. This is the business end of a plasma cutter. And if you don't know what a plasma cutter is, well, neither do I really. It uses electricity to cut metal. I, I, it's like a welder and a cutter. Like a welder cutter? This thing is consumable, and then there's another little tip on it that's consumable. By, by consumabilizing, the longer you cut, the more it uses. And I think the dirtier the material you're cutting, also affects the amount of life. So you can buy these, these are consumable, like I said. Um, but yeah, it uses electricity, it forms an arc, and then there's air that shoots out of this little hole here, and it blows the slag out, cutting your material. So it's very efficient, easy, doesn't hurt at all. You just gotta wear your appropriate eye protection, just like any kind of welding. So plasma cutter, that's my, that's my cool tool. So the other way to cut metal is oxyacetylene. And from what I believe, that's a lot more expensive to use because you're using more consumable material. So the initial outlay on a plasma cutter is not the cheapest thing, but you can get cheap enough plasma cutters to make it the most cost efficient way to cut things. You can use a hacksaw. Use a hacksaw. Well, plasma cutter. It's when I want to cut weird shapes. It's a lot easier than anything else I can find. How I'm gonna make the evaporator with this oil drum is I'm going to take my plasma cutter, cut it into a weird shape, almost like a baby cradle, in order to give me a place where I can later put my stainless steel pan on top. That wasn't so bad. No wonder why it's so heavy. It's got like five gallons of old oil in there. It must have been like, uh, somebody must have used that for like used oil or something like that. That's not, doesn't look like furnace oil. It looks like uh, definitely not good oil. So I'm going to dispose of that properly. It's like a baby's cradle. A really weird baby's cradle. Fabricate a little bit more, weld some stuff up and uh, we're almost ready for the pan, which is, you kind of see, kind of see how it's gonna shape up. We just need the front firebox and fire brick clean this old oil out of here and 
Yeah, we're well on our way. This is, uh, but hey, it's gonna be well worth it. I can already taste those pancakes, right? Maple syrup, mmm. Well, the storm has passed. Yesterday we had a we had about a foot of snow, and uh, everybody knows Dwayne, right? Mm -hmm. Dwayne, you may remember Dwayne when we uh, we move heavy things and we dig big holes and stuff. So do strange things. Strange things in the forest. So uh, Dwayne was uh, a little cabin fever yesterday, right? Yeah, a little bit. And he was like, "What are you guys up to?" And I'm like, "We're logging." And Dwayne's like, "You like logging?" I do, actually. <laughs> I really do. Actually so it, like logging. It, people don't know, but in your former life, you used to heli log. I did. I used to be an aircraft mechanic on a helicopter that used to do heli logging. That thing doesn't fly. Well, maybe. <laughs> Depends on how we get Dwayne's gonna try to make the Kubota fly. So that's the uh, the plan. Is the extra help. Dawn's on his way. We're going to uh, cut down them up and Dwayne's going to haul out because he's a, he's sort of an expert when it comes to anything to do with motors and hydraulics and, and diesel fuel and that sort of thing. Okay. Or you, you want to cut and I'll drive. I don't care. I'll do whatever you want. That's okay. I'll cut. I like cutting. I don't like cutting. I don't like driving. What's the temp today? It's like, uh, it's cold. My woke up is minus 19 Celsius. On my drive over, my truck warmed up to minus 14. Why are we out here? I don't know. <laughs> because it's sunny and I had a few hours this morning. That's right. What's that American? Uh, it's about like Texas cold. It's Texas cold it's out here. It's Texas cold, that's right. <laughs> ah, welcome to the cold, Texas. Except for we still have power and they don't. <laughs> that, that's right. The Canadians decided that uh, it gets cold and we winterize our stuff. You guys will get through it. It's just cold. You just start burning things. Anyways, let's get... Uh, Let's get rocking on this thing. We've okay. got uh, we've got our road plowed, and uh, Dwayne's just gonna tickle that a little bit so we got some more traction. I'll start knocking down some trees, and let's get some uh, more logs piled up. An important part about owning a small engine, especially a little chainsaw or a lawnmower or anything for that matter, it's important to always use premium gas. So the higher the octane, the better the fuel. I even go to the extent of actually putting a little bit in my truck before filling up my jerry cans because you don't want that ethanol gas inside your small engine. And still, Steel recommend that you only use their uh, their their oil mix for their gas because I guess it does something to do with the, the fuel lines and the carburetor and whatnot. So always use the steel mix, the 50 to one steel mix. For the amount of money you're gonna save by putting in, you know, gas with ethanol, the, the lower grade gasoline in your saws, you might as well just, you know, bite the bullet by the premium for the amount of gas you're actually buying. It makes your saw run so much better and it, and it stores, it's got like a longer shelf life for uh, for the gas when you use premium, it doesn't gum up the, the carb. Yeah, always use premium. If you if you listen to any of my advice, that's the one to listen to. Never turn your back on a tree. This one here is leaning towards us. We don't want it to fall that way. So when Dwayne gets back, we get him to push it with the bucket or the hoe that way. Cause it's just easier that way. Machinery. Quick, quick, Don, go sit in the chair. <laughs> I feel like this is a teaching moment. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of the things I do. Uh oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Dwayne, uh, Dwayne, Dwayne didn't realize how brittle these trees are. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was a little bit nervous, but I wanted to get just a little bit more angle for it and come out with a pulling. But this is a pretty dry tree. <laughs> you gotta like roll protection. Well. 
Well, the roll protection saved you and the bucket did. Yeah. And see, see, Don was not a part of that. He just showed up, and he <laughs> he's like, "What I what I come here for?" Well, we got yeah. like we got a section of it. So you can just kind of see how dry these things are and how powerful this little tiny tractor is. Yeah. So the plan was to get the little little tow chain from over there. That's what I was running to grab. And Dwayne got a little excited and started pushing. I just wanted, I didn't, I, I knew it wasn't going to come all the way over. I just wanted a little bit more angle for when I pulled it out to make it come out nicer. But yeah. I didn't realize it was that brittle. He needed some excitement in his life. Yep. And fortunately, the loader bucket and the roll protection was up and saved his head. Which is not what it's designed for, but it really worked. Well, the roll protection, that's what it's designed for, but... All's well that ends well, right? That's right. That's why he uses my tractor. He likes using my tractor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like mine, but, you know, not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don says good morning. Good morning, Don. Good morning. All right, let's, uh, let's get Dwayne out of from underneath this tree. We went three days without doing this, you know that. <laughs> So I figure after all that morning work, we should talk about my wood. How, how many did we pull out, Dwayne? Uh, I'm guessing about uh, 16 to 20, somewhere in there. Yeah, he pulled out 16 or 20 woods. So there, there's our, there's our productivity for the morning. Dwayne just kind of threw them wherever. It's true. You just can you just drop your you drop the mic and go home, right? That's right. <laughs> How long did it take you to clean up the excavator in the, uh, oh, in the yeah. skid steer? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. When we dug the pond, I don't know if you guys watched that video. The uh, those are th something else to clean up. They uh, they require just as much time to clean up as they do to actually do the work. Yeah. They do. Yeah, a power washer helps when you're cleaning up a. We were, there's the excavator, the tracked excavator that we were uh, cleaning. So yeah, so we've got. Looks like we've got enough material to actually start building. So maybe this afternoon we'll go and clear a spot out where the log cabin is actually going to go. Maybe make a fire because it's cold. It is cold. I thought it would have warmed up by now. But it's, it's in the bush. You're in the bush. It's cold. Like the sun. No sun. It's a, it's like it's sunny out today, and you just got nothing. Yeah, it's uh... enough to wear sunglasses, but not enough to do you know major surgery in the bush. We just swing by the sauna first. <laughs> wow. You ever go fire it up? So where do you think, Don? Where should we put? The, where, where should we put the cabin? Up there. Up there? We should put it on top of the hill, not at the bottom. But just think, when you're collecting sap, you can walk downhill. I don't think we gotta go that far. Well, I'm thinking right there, right where that hemlock is. Nice sunny spot. It's downhill from every other tree, other other maple tree. Or we do it further down. What do you think? And then we got some brush we can actually use to to burn out the spot. And there's not, there's no real trees we have to take down. Everything's just kind of blow down and dead. That's another dead ash tree. Nice and straight. Too. It is straight, but it's it's right where we want to build the cabin again. Oh, we might have to throw a throw line in that thing and pull it the other way. Maybe we'll take that one out before we get too far building this cabin. All right, let's uh, set you guys up and uh, yeah, get this place cleared out. We're going to clear out this spot and to see if we have some level ground. If we don't have level ground, we've got a couple of tricks up our sleeves in order to ensure our cabin starts level. Either a cribbing by using some cedar poles to fashion a uh, kind of like a 
a box in order for the, the actual walls to sit on. Or we can, if we discover we have usable ground, we could either make a rammed earth sort of tire foundation for the walls to sit on. But first we've got to clear the area in order to see what we're working with. And in the winter time, this isn't always easy. Fire is our friend. Right now we can kind of clear out the dead stuff, clear off the snow, light a fire, burn all the brush and kind of see what we're working with. The story behind this evaporator build actually goes back a couple of years. On the, uh, the Wooded Beardsman's channel, a couple of years ago, we started basically using a stainless steel vat that we actually borrowed from my buddy Dwayne. And uh, we fashioned some bricks in a, in a little square and we put that on top. And we boiled, we boiled like that for two years. And we, create, we made a lot of maple syrup that way. And we kind of evolved over the time because what was happening then was we were, we were basically, all the water was coming, all the snow was melting and it was kind of forming underneath these pile of bricks and it was making our efficiency go out the window. So we evolved the following year, actually two years later, we, uh, after the first year we didn't learn, second year we did it the same way. Third year, we ended up taking an old oven and uh, cutting that up and actually that worked really well until the oven basically disintegrated. It started going all warped and, and it, I didn't think it was gonna hold the, the you know, the weight of the maple sap that was on top of it, which was, you know, enormous, I think it was like a, the box was two and a half feet, two and a half feet by about two feet, which is a lot of, a lot of weight. So that brings us to, to now. We, we ended up trying to find a sponsor to sponsor the, uh, the maple evaporator. We looked, you know, from Ontario to Vermont and, and all in between and um, yeah, no luck there. So using a lot of ingenuity and some time, we're gonna build our own, like probably saving thousands of dollars in the process and, and learning a few things along the way. The basic premise behind an evaporator is to create a large surface area for fire to get to in order to create as much heat as possible to the water in order to have it boil and evaporate. As you guys can see, I've already welded the back portion of this firebox on and I like to call it like the little tombstone it looks like a little tombstone and that's where I'm going to weld kind of like a, a sleeve in order for my chimney to exit out the top of it so that's where the all the you know smoke and gases are going to exit the building from in order to make a flat surface for the evaporator pan I first have to grind off the chunks left from the plasma cutter to give me a nice flat surface for the angle iron to sit on and that'll allow me to put my evaporator box on top, which is going to be made of stainless steel, something food grade. Now I can add my angle iron on top. In this video, I don't really talk about welding much. And there's a reason for that because I don't really know enough to teach anybody anything about welding. I wanted to stick metal together, so I went to my local store and I picked up myself a welder. Easy Big 140, that's all I know. I know it's red, I know it can stick metal together, I know there's a couple dials with it, and you basically, basically what I've done is I've played with the settings in order to make welds stick together. Now, I've tested the weld by banging them with a sledgehammer to see if they break. That seems to be my only test. I think that they do bend tests on, on, the, on welds. These aren't mission critical welds, so I'm not that concerned that they're not going to hold up. And if they don't hold up, I can always bring them back and re-weld them. My advice is if you, if you want to learn how to weld, I'm sure there's hundreds of other channels on welding. I am not the guy to learn from in order to weld. So guys, if you're gonna work hard, you gotta play hard too. Ace Jet, you ever heard of those guys? They make throwing knives. Adam Chilladine's a pretty big fan of the Wooded Beardsman's channel and mine. So he sent us this, kind of first to try it. I've never thrown a knife in my life. Get right into the spirit of it. I'm going to show you the main ones and explain the differences. So, Let's get started. So these knives from Ace Jet, there's a, I got two sets of three knives. This is the uh, Ace Jet Fin, and then this guy is the Ace Jet Stinger. 
I don't know much about them, but my initial impression of them, they're, these are heavy duty. These are, they're honking. Let's see if I can get these things to stick on the first throw. Well, let's, let's start at the beginning then. I don't, <laughs> don't want to get too far. Like this? Uh, there are some half drawers, like I think it's half the <laughs> He's able to throw military house pin. <laughs> whoa, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you want to have more of it. <laughs> Whoa! Well, that, that took us all. We, we only had to watch the video. I actually pay attention to the video. Oh, there. Hey. Oh. That's so close. Ah! Thanks a lot, Adam. Uh, these are fun to shoot. Super fun to shoot. And we're going to be shooting them again oh. for sure. Shooting them? Shooting them. Throwing, Throwing them. them. <laughs> but super fun. Oh, and uh, if my hands weren't freezing, yeah. We'd be out here for a few more hours doing this till we mastered it. I think these are, uh, these are oh. this is a warm weather sport or I think you got to get a bigger fire going. Thanks a lot Adam for sending these out. Really appreciate it. This is going to be hours of fun. The link will be in the description below if you want to check these guys out. Thanks Adam. Well, all I can say today, at least it's sunny out. I was out here moving some snow so I can actually get back to the cabin. We got another bunch of snow and well, the tire fell off and I've been having trouble with these front tires for a little bit. It's, I think they just the, the width and the low profile of it all. Uh, it might have been a little bit underinflated and uh, yeah, the weight of the snow tend to just, uh, well, fell off the rim. So let's, uh, let's take this tire off. I've got, I happen to have another side tire. I have a, I had a bought a spare. Uh, a while back to actually replace the left side and now the right side's gone so I think it's just kind of just the nature of these these beasts that did some looking at in on the forums and they basically said there's some issues so I might send these out to get fo foam filled so they won't uh, they won't have an air issue anymore so I've got to get this this chain off and then this tire off and actually bring the set in and in the meantime I'll put another temporary tire on this thing so I can continue on my work like I said, at least it's sunny. Hey, Bean, you wanna go on a car ride? Hey, you wanna go on a car ride? Wanna go for a ride? Hey, you wanna go for a ride? Yeah, let's go for a ride. Let's go to the car, come on. Go on the car, there you go. Sit. Good girl. This is the calmest they've ever seen you. Hey, in the car. You like the car? Wanna go to the go to the tire store? Hey Bean? Come on, say hello. Bean. Squirrel. No. Camera shy, eh? Hello. Hey John, here's your tire, buddy. Hunger. I'll get you the other one. It's gonna be over two hundred dollars each to foam fill. You know that? Is that gonna be awesome? What's that? Is it gonna be awesome when it's done? Well, he said when I told him they were used tires, he says, "Why are you putting foam filling used tires?" They're not that old. Yep. Are there ones? You should ask Angela a few okay. questions. Is that thing on sale? Yes, that's sale price. See, this is why you don't go buy tires, because you end up leaving with four, and they're part of a four by four. Talk about dealers and service of your tractors. It's I think it's more important to purchase something from a dealer that's going to stand behind their product. And it goes a long way when choosing what brand to buy. Like if you if you look at either, you know, Kubota or you look at John Deere or Massey Ferguson or, or whatever, I find from past experience, it goes a long way picking the dealer as opposed to the company. Cause those are all great tractors. And the chances are they're gonna they're gonna, you know, do your job for you do and do it well. It's it's a question of what dealer is A the closest and B is going to help you when you call them. Like if you call them and you're like, I need a tire, John, and John goes, yep, come on by, come pick up a tire. That's the kind of dealer 
I got a spare set of tires now. I, I, I was talking about foam filling, so they're gonna they're gonna assess whether or not the tires that I have are are worthy of the foam filling because I know that the uh, the foam filling is not cheap. Uh, although that's sort of a permanent solution to the uh, you know finding sharp sticks in the bush and nails and whatnot because once it's foam filled. Uh, they're basically puncture proof, puncture resistant. I know there's problems with those those wide tires with the low profiles having problems. And, and again, in a, an ideal world, you know, if you're not pushing it and you're just mowing the grass, the chances are your tire's fine. It's, it's when you're doing kind of extracurricular activities and you got it in the bush. That's usually when, when a foam filled tire is, is ideal. So that's, uh, we're gonna see that and uh, maybe we're gonna change uh, the two front tires out. Foam filled. Set it and forget it. Okay, so we're on our inaugural burn. So the firebox is more or less built we just got to do some little bit more minor adjustments to it but first i want to clean it out the story behind this evaporator goes back a couple of years when we were originally building the cabin on uh, my brother's channel the wooded beardsman see how this thing lights up burn off of any any of the old uh heating oil that's in there and if you guys don't know the heating oil is burned in a furnace so we're not really doing anything beyond you know doing it's kind of like that's the end game on furnace oil you get it gets burnt so we're just burning it up so it doesn't uh contaminate our our pan or anything like that so it's a nice clean burn yeah that's it let's light this thing up and see how uh see how well it works this is, uh, the remnants of the heating oil as you can see Water and heating oil freezes, but the heating oil itself doesn't. And again, this is what you use to heat your home. So what do you think of this, Chris? It's making an inferno. It's gonna make so much sugar. I'm picturing the box going all the way through here, but apparently that's not gonna happen. No, you're, gonna, you're gonna only make a short box. I want I want so much syrup that it's like this high and the maybe it's this fat and you just like you just hook the tree in like a like a IV drip and you just suck it all in there and then blow it all off and then you end up with delicious maple syrup. You got to put this thing into a cabin and not burn the cabin down. <laughs> we, people think we have a history of burning things down. In, in, in reality, it's whenever we let somebody else help us. <laughs> they don't quite know the idiosyncrasies involved with that specific build. So this thing, this is the inaugural burn, but the, the actual firebox is only going to be about this big. And then fire brick gets all around here. And then there's an angled piece that comes up to the back over here that channels the smoke up the tombstone looking air channel, which there'll be a chimney up top there. And then the fire box will be loaded through this way. Kind of like we uh, looked over at Gord's, my buddy's evaporator. So this is modeled after his, his works really well. And we've come a long way from, we stacked bricks in, 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 in formation and we did uh, just, just loose, loose fitting bricks yeah, loose and we'd shove wood in the bottom and I, I'd be out here for what, three weeks straight feeding wood, just sitting there watching wood burn, collecting sap. And then the second version, the second version was a stove and that, that oh, worked right. really well. We yeah. used an old uh, oven. And we uh, took we saw we took the door out and and <laughs> tilted it on end and that worked actually really really well. Two seasons out of that before it kind of started getting it got wonkier and wonkier and it got crippled. But it's still it's, wait, where is that? Is this we it's still have that? Still in the scrap pile. And we but we lost our pan. That's, yeah. That, did you go through the story of that? We lost the pan. Oh right. So that's why we ended up here is because we we're gonna make something a lot better than just like well we 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 borrowed a pan. We borrowed a pan from Dwayne. Dwayne lent us a pan, he was very kind, and then it stayed here for five years. <laughs> Thanks, Dwayne. We made lots of lots of syrup with it, though. Yes, that's true. We did make lots of syrup. We didn't actually give Dwayne any syrup. We should give Dwayne some syrup <laughs> for that. So we ended up, he needed it back. We gave it back to him. I think he was actually boiling uh, like when he was doing his chickens in that, uh, that thing. That originally was designed for hot water at camping. So you would light a fire and eat that thing, heat it up, and uh, 
have hot water for camp. It had a small, a small pan, but a very deep. Yeah. It wasn't very good. It for wasn't boiling. ideal for boiling syrup because you want kind of a shallow pan, but more surface area. So this thing is going to be two feet wide by five feet long by about a foot deep. And that should give us plenty of surface area to boil our sap. Industrial, industrial qu quantities. That's right. We're not going to get the smoky flavor that we did from the other ev evaporator. That's true. So we're going to probably lose a little bit of our, our taste, but if we keep the bugs in it, like we had then, <laughs> and we'll, don't do a fine filter, yes. we just leave it all in there, the bark and the bugs and just whatever is in there till the end. Yep. It'll be a nice black, dark, rich maple syrup. If we talk too long, Don will just fill us up with wood. You know that, right? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I want to see an inferno. But, well, I, yeah, we got too many logs nearby. We're just stirring around the coals to get the uh, the sludge that's accumulated at the bottom. It's not the easiest thing to burn out. So as long as we push it around, it gets the junk that's at the bottom. Well, guys, looks like we got a really good burn going on here. We're going to burn off everything that's on here and we can burn off all the paint so we can actually get this in and make it fancy. We're gonna add some uh, stove black paint on it so it's not always peeling. And uh, next week, hopefully we can start building the actual cabin that this thing is going to live in. So join me on the next one. Oh, my hands are cold. You roast a pig in there. There's an idea.